Hello, students. It is Miss Pittman here, dressed as Lady Macbeth in character, ready to read. I am focusing first on Act One, Scene Five. And at this point, you should have already read Act One, Scenes Four and Five. So this should be a review. I'm going to read the section on page 31. So she's reading out loud this letter from her husband, Macbeth, that's telling her about what happened, about the witches, and that he might have a chance to be king. And then she responds, You are Thane of Glamis and Cawdor, and you're going to be king just like you were promised. But I worry about whether or not you have what it takes to seize the crown. You are too full of the milk of human kindness to strike aggressively at your first opportunity. You want to be powerful and you don't lack ambition, but you don't have the mean streak that these things call for. The things you want to do, you want to do like a good man. You don't want to cheat, yet you want what doesn't belong to you. There's something you want, but you're afraid to do what you need to get it. You want it to be done for you. Hurry home so I can persuade you and talk you out of whatever's keeping you from going after the crown. After all, fate and witchcraft both seem to want you to be king. Okay, now I'm Mrs. Pittman again here. Let me remove my um, Lady Macbeth costume. So she's saying that he wants this. He's ambitious, but he's scared. He's not going to do it. And she says, just wait, come on home. And I will convince you to do what has to be done. So I want you guys to think about that. What does this say about her? What does this say about Macbeth? And do you think that she's going to have the power to get what she wants? Let's look at another spot. We are now on page 33 at the bottom where it says Lady Macbeth. She starts with take good care of him. He brings great news and the servant exits. And now she is talking to herself. So let me get back into character. My Lady Macbeth costume, clearly. Ah, yes. There she is. Hello. Hello, students. I'm now Lady Macbeth. All right. I don't think that's a very accurate accent, but here we go. So the messenger is short of breath like a horse raven as he announces Duncan's entrance into my fortress where he will die. Come, you spirits that assist murderous thoughts and make me less like a woman and more like a man. And fill me from head to toe with deadly cruelty. Thicken my blood and clog up my veins so I won't feel remorse. So that no human compassion can stop my evil plan or prevent me from accomplishing it. Come to my female breasts and turn my mother's milk into poisonous acid. You murdering demons wherever you hide, invisible and waiting to do evil. Come, thick night, and cover the world in the darkest smoke of hell, so that my sharp knife can't see the wound it cuts open. And so heaven can't peep through the darkness and cry, no, stop. Wow. So she is saying that she wants, she's praying basically to be less like a woman and more like a man. And the implication is that men are more likely to commit crime, to murder, to do these bad things that need to be done to King Duncan so that they can become king and queen. When you go to those discussion questions, think about that. Think about what she's saying. What does it mean as far as gender goes? How is she kind of setting up a stereotype or a generalization here about men and women and just what do you think about her as a person all right hope you enjoyed my performance miss you guys bye